this course is presented to you free of charge by TTJ Tech Services of www.ttjtech.biz and by Stir It Up of www.stirritup.com. And remember, stir is spelled with a U, not an I. So that's S-T-U-R-I-T-U-P dot com. TTJ Tech Services and Stir It Up are pleased to offer this course to you to the glory of God and to the benefit of all those who listen. Welcome to session, there we go, number three, session number three of the Midwinter Digital Cafe Apple TV course. I want to begin by uh, just revisiting a couple areas that we talked about, providing a little bit of additional information, a little bit of clarification, um, and and some more detail about certain things. Um I also want to kind of, again, just cover this sort of how do we actually watch TV sort of workflow, if you want to call it a workflow. Um, So let me begin by just making a couple of clarifications and um, reminders about some of the things we've discussed. Uh, One of the things that I wanted to revisit briefly was the, um, the navigation versus exploration mode if you're a voiceover user. And I can't stress to you enough how important it is to understand the difference between these two. And since that time, we've gotten some questions on our email support lists, and I've gotten some private questions and feedback and so on. And it's it's shown me that I need to just go a little bit more over this, uh, this concept again. It is really, really encouraged to use navigation mode unless you need to explore something in depth. If you get a code on the screen and it's it's just too much to remember, you can try pressing and holding the play pause button. Remember, that'll cause voiceover to read what's on the screen again. But if you still can't get it and you need to read it character by character, that's a time to use exploration mode. You know, there's some situations like that. But ordinarily, you're going to want to do most of your normal use, everyday operation in navigation mode, not exploration mode, because this is how you actually get around the Apple TV. And what you'll find is that voiceover behaves differently when it is in exploration mode, even to the extent of what it will automatically read. Like there's something that um, some people have said, if you ask Siri a question while you're in exploration mode, voiceover doesn't necessarily automatically read the Siri response on the screen. Well, just go to navigation mode and that's not going to be a problem. Okay. Now you will know if there's any question at all, you will know whether you are in navigation or exploration mode as you move along the trackpad or the click pad rather, either by clicking or by swiping, because when you're in the normal navigation mode, you will not hear voiceover sound effects. Now, Apple TV itself has sound effects, so don't be confused. If your sound effects are on, which they are by default, when you move along the screen from item to item, like TV to App Store to you know whatever apps you have, you will hear a little Apple TV sound even in navigation mode. It's like just this little noise like that as you're moving along items or the one, depending on where you are, it's a higher pitch sound that I probably can't reach that note, but you get the idea. You'll just hear this little noise and you'll, even if you turn voiceover off, that noise is still present. But if you go to exploration mode, you're going to hear voiceover clicks. Like, you know, those navigation clicks that voiceover makes on the iPhone. And then when you double tap something, It makes a little sound when, you know, you're going to hear those kinds of sounds if you're in exploration mode. So normally on an everyday basis, you don't want to be hearing those navigation voiceover clicks, hearing the Apple TV clicks, but not the voiceover clicks means you're in the correct mode. Now, again, to go back and forth between the two modes, you're going to place two fingers on the click pad and tap three times, triple tap. Now, as I was working on this and looking at how does it work and how do I best do it 
because it might be tough for some people. It's a small click pad, you know, to get two fingers on there in just the right way. What I find works best for me is to sort of turn the remote sideways. I hold the remote like in my left hand slightly sideways so that I can then approach the click pad with my index and middle finger of the right hand. And I sort of that way, because the remote's turned sideways, I can easily fit two fingers um, on the trackpad now or the click pad, excuse me. And when I do that, those fingers are actually turned such that uh, they were they're they're uh, approaching the click pad top to bottom or bottom to top. But each finger is is beside each other and I just can easily triple tap. There's room enough to do it. And I don't know that it has to be exactly that way, but I think that will help you to be able to get those two fingers on there. Because I know sometimes that can be a tricky gesture for people to uh, to use. And so we want to make sure you know how to get into navigation mode. Again, I don't expect that this will be something you need to mess with very often. I think once you're once you're in navigation mode, you're going to probably stay there most of the time. But, uh, you know, especially during the initial setup and so on, you may uh, you may find that going to exploration mode at some point makes sense. Um, the next thing I want to revisit is when we talk about text entry. Um, I just want to remind you that you can quickly switch between upper and lowercase letters on most of the on-screen keyboards by using the play pause button. Okay, that's very important to remember. You also can go down and find uppercase, lowercase, punctuation, you know, those sorts of things. But again, pressing play pause will quickly toggle you. And it may actually, if you repeatedly press it, take you to those other keyboards as well. Numbers, special symbols, all of that. Remember, you can hold the side button and dictate. Uh, when you dictate email addresses and passwords, it's best to spell it out letter by letter. You can say capital if it's uppercase. Um, also, you can use your iPhone. Remember, continuity keyboard. We talked about that last week. That appears on your iPhone, and you can type on your iPhone and you can or iPad, and you can even use Keychain that way. So just a reminder about that. I also want to remind you with regard to text entry that when you are entering email addresses, a list of recently used or previously used, not even recently, but a list of previously used email addresses will start to form after you've logged in a while, you know, your Apple ID email address will be there. And if you use others, they'll, they'll show up there too. So you can easily choose and not have to enter manually an email address that way from, from the list. And you can manage those from settings. Um, I also want to talk about a specific setting in the rotor, which there are a few voiceover settings on Apple TV. And I think I mentioned this the other day, but I wanted to make sure I covered it again. There are a few settings for voiceover on Apple TV that only can be controlled from the rotor. You can go through your voiceover settings under accessibility and you won't find some of these things, but you can put them in the rotor and, and make the change if you need to. And so those include uh, certain things like uh, audio ducking. I don't think you'll see that in your voiceover settings like you do on iPhone and iPad but you can add it to the rotor. And so if you need to turn audio ducking off, I'm, I'm not a fan of audio ducking. I don't like it personally. Uh, that's not a criticism. I, I'm sure there are people for whom it's beneficial or maybe even necessary. Um, but I don't personally prefer it because what audio ducking does is it takes away the sound of what I'm listening to when voiceover is talking. It really, really reduces it. And I want to be able to hear what I'm listening to while voiceovers talking. So I always disable audio ducking. Well, to do that on Apple TV, you're going to have to add audio ducking to the rotor by going into your rotor settings and clicking on it to select it. Once it's in there, you don't even have to leave your settings, right? You could just add it to the rotor and then turn the rotor to audio ducking and then swipe down to turn it off or up, up, down, whatever. And then I like to remove it from the rotor because, again, I don't want to have that in there. I'm, I don't plan to change that setting ever. Once it's disabled, I leave it disabled. So your rotor options can easily be adjusted. And when you don't need something in the rotor, you can remove it. Now, there's something that typically appears in the rotor by default. I like to make sure the setting is the way I want. And then I like to remove it so I don't accidentally disable it. And that is something called read screen after delay. 
Now, what read screen after delay does is, and again, I think I referenced this the other day, but I just want to go over it again. Read screen after delay causes voiceover to automatically, after a slight delay, read the entire screen. So if you have like a movie poster and you have a description of that movie or a TV show with a description on the page, uh, it will automatically read whatever is on the screen for you so you can hear the description of that show or movie, for example. And disabling that means you're going to have to find it by swiping or clicking or press the play pause button uh, and hold it to do it. I like read screen after delay to be enabled. I like it to be turned on. And I'm pretty sure that it is by default. But it's one of those things that's only in the rotor. So if you accidentally disable it, you need to turn the rotor to the read screen after delay option and then swipe up to turn it on. Now, what I like to do then is to remove it from the rotor because I don't want to even run the risk of accidentally turning it on or off. I do not have any desire to turn it off. And so I remove it from the rotor. So there are things you can add. There are things you can remove from the rotor. And also remember that the rotor will have different options depending on whether you're in exploration or navigation mode. All right. So the other thing now that I want to go back to is I want to kind of go back to this um, idea of how we actually watch TV. We talked about this the other day a little bit, but I want to talk about it even more right now because I want you to really get that aspect of things, right? So it's because to really get the most use out of Apple TV, it is important to, to know the different ways that you can navigate and the different ways you can use your apps. Now, remember this conversation right now, this discussion assumes that you already have some services that you subscribe to. If you don't have any paid services, you know, you can still use free ones like we've talked about YouTube, Pluto, Tubi, Amazon Freebie, you know, there's there's Crackle, there's others, right? But for the best experience, you're going to want to have some paid services as well. And remember, the generally accepted wisdom is that the more you have, the more TV you'll be able to watch. Now, if you are someone who wants to just have a linear live TV experience, there are apps that will do that as long as you remember that your provider may or may not have one right? So we know Xfinity does. They call it Xfinity Stream. We know Spectrum does. We know Optimum does. We know DirecTV does. They all have live TV apps. And then there's some live TV streaming only services like Hulu that have a live TV package, uh, Philo, YouTube TV, all of these different ones that we've talked about, Sling, right? And so Fubo. So if you install a live TV app, whether it's cable, satellite, or streaming only, You'll be able to use this in a sort of linear live TV experience. Now, every app is going to be set up a little bit differently, but they'll all give you your channels. They'll give you DVR. Uh, they'll give you on-demand programming, which you can watch at any time. And, uh, you know, a lot of other features. So you can certainly go to those apps if you want to do that. But my favorite way, as we talked about the other day, to, to start watching anything is to use the Apple TV app. Remember that the TV app is the home of Apple TV Plus, but it's a lot more than that. It also keeps track of everything you watch and makes it available to you across all of your devices. It's synced with iCloud. It's integrated with the vast majority of streaming services, although not every one of them. Uh, Netflix being a notable exception. Uh, that one you can't really use from the TV app, but the, most of the rest of the common ones you certainly can. And what you'll find is... What I showed you the other day, I gave you an example of when I swipe through my up next section, it keeps track of everything that I watch and makes the next episode or, you know, continuation of the, whatever available to me. And it automatically knows what app to open it in, right? If I click on an episode in that up next row, it automatically resumes, whether it's something I've purchased, whether it's something on Peacock or max or paramount plus wherever it is even xfinity stream it will open up in those apps i also have the ability as i showed you the other day to go into the my channels and apps section in the sidebar or in the um home tab and i can see all the channels that i have and uh i can see what's on them up next and, and a whole lot more right 
So that's very beneficial as well. Now, something I don't think I covered is what if you find something in your up next row and you don't want that episode? You want a different episode. So I am watching, uh, let's say, the series Friends, okay? And it's on season four, episode five. I have no idea what that is off the top of my head. I could probably guess because I've watched that show a good bit, but I would be pretty close, but maybe not exactly accurate. But whatever, we're just going to call it season four, episode five is next for me to watch of Friends. And for some reason, I don't want to watch that episode today. Either I don't like it or I I already saw it somewhere else or whatever reason, I just want to skip that and I want to go to episode six or seven or something like that. How do I do that? Well, instead of clicking on the episode in Up Next, you do the long press. If you're an iPhone or an iPad user and you have taken our voiceover classes, or maybe even if you haven't, you are familiar with the long press gesture. On iPhone and iPad, it's a double tap and hold with voiceover or a triple tap if you want. Uh, Without voiceover, it's just a, a tap and hold, right? Just a press. Well, on Apple TV, they have this same context type of command or gesture but instead of you doing a tap and hold you're going to do a click and hold that is you're going to click the center of the click pad and hold for a second or two and instead of starting the episode of the show it will bring up a context menu so again in the tv app if you go to the up next row and you find something you want you click and hold the center of the trackpad, uh, click pad, and it pops up with a context menu. It will have options like remove from up next. If you got something in your up next section that you don't want there, you can remove it. It'll have the option to view the episode or even view the show. And if you go, if you choose go to show, it's going to bring up the show page with all the episodes. And so that's how you would pick a different episode if you did not want the one that was ready to play already. You could just pick any episode and click it to start watching it. Also, that's your show page. So that's where you see the cast and crew. That's where you see the how to watch section. You remember how to watch the other day, right? That's where it says, okay, you can you can purchase this for $10. Uh, you can watch seasons one and two on uh, Hulu. You can watch all eight seasons on uh, Peacock, Paramount, whatever, right? All the different ways that a show is available will be in that how to watch section. And this can be important depending on your preferences. Maybe there's a certain app that you like better than another app. Maybe there's a certain app that you don't subscribe to or that you used to subscribe to and so you still have it installed, but you certainly don't want it to open up on that app now because you no longer subscribe to it, right? You want to pick a different one. So you can choose in that how to watch section. So again, it's very important to know that click and hold command because it gets you to the context menu where you can choose go to show and you can get to the show page that way. So that click and hold is very, very useful. Okay. It lets you explore all the episodes, how to watch related content, all sorts of things like that. Now, as I said, we talk about how we like to watch TV. I like to start with the TV app because what we typically do in our family, we watch very little live TV. We really do, okay? Every once in a while, we have some things that we watch live. So we'll watch the Super Bowl. Um, we like to watch the uh, the ball drop on New Year's Eve. Um, we typically, if we watch some of these like competition shows like American Idol, we try to watch them live so that we can vote when you're supposed to. Um, and, uh, you know, so some of these we do occasionally watch live. But really and truly, it's very minimal what we'll watch that's live. Now, sometimes, you know, we're eating dinner and relaxing and I'll turn on the game show network live and we'll watch some of the, you know, uh, the games they have or Smithsonian channel or something. But a lot of times, even those we can get on demand. And so rather than just whatever's on, we'll choose what we want instead, you know, so, um, game show network, you know, we might say, well, I I don't want to watch family feud. I want to watch, uh, split second so I can go, and, and choose that on demand and, and watch it instead of, you know, just whatever's live. So I've said all that to say our family watches very, very little live TV. And most of the time, uh, what our kids like, you know, they'll say we want to watch 
uh, full house or we want to watch Thundermans or whatever. And they don't want to just turn it on live if it happens to be on. They want to be sure that we're on the right episode, you know, where we were in the series because we like to watch them over and over. So it, the TV app is the greatest way to do that because it keeps track of where you were. You just start it up. If it happens to be wrong for some reason, you click and hold. You go in there and choose the correct episode. If we want to watch something new, we can explore, right? We can explore our channels and apps. The home tab. We can search for things. There's a search tab in there. We can search for something we want to watch. We can ask SIRI for a, a program or even, uh, you know, a category. Like I said, you know, show me some good family movies or some kids movies or, you know, movies about dinosaurs or whatever it is that you may want to watch. You can, um, you know, you can ask. And then there is um, the possibility of going into a particular app. Instead, if you don't want to use the TV app, for example, if our kids, let's just say hypothetically, they're really, really in the mood to watch Disney Plus. Now, there's no reason you can't use the TV app to do that, okay? Because the TV app will show Disney Plus as a channel and it'll show you some of the things that are on it. But you might feel that for an even more robust Disney Plus experience, you'd rather just open the app. So there's nothing wrong with that. Just go to Disney Plus, open it up and explore. That's fine. You can do that. It'll still, if you start watching something in Disney Plus, it will still show up in the TV app in your Up Next row uh, once you start watching it. Or you can manually add it. There's an add to Up Next button on the show pages in the TV app anyway. And if you're in Disney Plus, like I said, all you got to do is start watching it and then it shows up in Up Next so that next time it will be in the TV app. Now, if you have a live TV provider like Xfinity or Hulu Live, or Spectrum, or DirecTV, or any of these. To get the most out of that subscription specifically, it is also best to check with their app. Because the thing about live TV apps is that sometimes they have on-demand programming that doesn't show up in the Up Next section, because a particular channel within the live TV package just doesn't do that for whatever reason. Okay, So if you have a live TV package it's still a good idea to check in the live TV app as well for things that you want to watch. So if I'm searching for a particular movie and I know that I really want to watch this movie, let's just say uh, I want to watch, um, I want to watch Titanic. Okay. So I'm going to start out probably by using the TV app and I'll either, or, or I'll use S I R I if I want to ask, but you know, I'll, I'll just use the TV app. Now I, uh, I happen to have my iPhone right in my hand. So rather than turning on the uh, television and everything right now and having to go over there to let you hear it, I'll just do it on my phone because it has the same TV app. My iPads have the same TV app, my phone, all of that, and everything's in sync, praise God. So what we'll do, um, because of iCloud, it, it keeps, they keep everything in sync. I'm just going into the TV app right now as we speak. And I'm searching for Titanic. Okay. Now, when I find the search results, and when you get a list of search results on the Apple TV, they're going to be in different rows. So you might need to click down or swipe down. Um, you'll have top results. You'll have search suggestions, top results, movies, TV shows, you know, whatever, cast and crew. But I am going to find Titanic. And it's right here, Titanic movie. So I open that up. And let's see how it's available. Um, there's a trailers if we want to watch one, but related iTunes extras. Heading. iTunes extras are like the DVD content of yesteryear. If we want to actually buy the movie, we get those iTunes extras. But let's um how to watch how to watch heading. Titanic. Okay. Apple TV Play purchase iTunes extras included button and illustration. Now Play. you'll notice that it said Apple TV Play purchased because I already own it. But if I didn't already own it, it would say Apple TV buy and it would give a price or maybe rent. Usually you can buy and rent most movies. Well, let's see if there's anything else. Infinity Stream open Infinity Stream app button. Interesting. So Titanic happens to be available in the Xfinity Stream app right now, which means it must be on one of the channels in my package or that could be in my package. So if I did not own titanic and i did not want to pay to purchase or rent it if it's available here in xfinity stream well i could just watch it there and let's see what else there is paramount plus 
Open in Paramount Plus app button. Interesting. It's also available in Paramount Plus. So now I have a choice. Now I say, well, uh, okay, I like both the Xfinity Stream and the Paramount Plus app. I could watch it in either one. Or maybe my Paramount Plus subscription includes no commercials, whereas in Xfinity Stream, I might have commercials. So I'd pick whichever one I want, right? And there must be, I bet it's on CBS or Paramount Network or something. Paramount Plus, subscribe. $11.99 slash month button. Now, remember, Paramount Plus is available in two ways. We talked about that last week as an app and also through the TV app as what's known as an Apple TV channel. That's why you see it twice. I have the app because I get my Paramount Plus through uh, my our family has a, a subscription to Walmart Plus and it's included. So I use the app. That's why the other one says subscribe. I don't need to do that because I already have the app. It still must be available elsewhere. Prime Video, get Prime Video app button. Now, most likely it's available as a Prime TV channel, just like an Apple TV channel through Paramount Plus. But you could watch it in the Prime app if you had uh, an Amazon Prime subscription with the Paramount Plus subscription. Hulu, get Hulu app button. Hulu app, and that's probably going to be Hulu Live because I'm still guessing it's on like the Paramount Network or something. That's why it's showing up in the Xfinity stream. So Showtime. Get Showtime app, Sling TV, get Sling TV app, cast in crew. Okay, so it's actually currently on, I guess, maybe the Showtime network. or the So maybe it's Paramount Plus with Showtime. I don't even know because they've, they've changed some names of things there. And so either way, it appears that I'd be able to watch this without buying it if I did not already own it. I would have to make sure that I had a particular channel in my package. But assuming that I do... I can just open it in Xfinity Stream or Paramount Plus, and I'm good to go. If not, I could buy or rent it. In my case, because I already own it, uh, I don't have to. Uh, I don't have to worry about that at all. And please bear with me one second. Be right back. Okay, there we go. There we go. I apologize. So anyway. I could watch it um, in one of those apps. And then if I didn't have those channels in my package or didn't have those subscriptions, I could absolutely rent or buy. I'm sure that movie is available to rent and not just purchase. Uh, it's not showing me that because I already own it. Um, but it, I'm sure it's available to rent or to purchase. Um, and uh, speaking of renting and purchasing, once you've purchased a movie or a TV show, or you've rented something, where do you find it later? Well, that's also in your Apple TV app. It's under the library uh, section. The library contains everything you've purchased, um, movies and TV shows, and any movie that you've rented that's still available to watch. You get 30 days from the moment you rent the movie to start watching it. And once you start, uh, you can watch it for 48 hours as many times as you want. Um, so anything you rent and, and anything you purchase is available in the library section of the TV app. So that's another thing that's useful. So you know some different ways now to watch TV. You use the TV app, you search, you use your up next row, you explore in the TV app, the home tab or any of the other tabs, right? Um, because there's Apple TV Plus, there's the MLS season pass, there's sports, there's all different things in the Apple TV app, your library of purchased content. And then, of course, you can search for things. You can explore your channels and apps from within the TV app, or you can open another app directly, like Xfinity Stream, Disney Plus, um, uh, ESPN Plus, Max, Paramount Plus, Peacock, um, even um, uh, you know Amazon Prime, or uh, you know some of these different apps um, will have, like for example. Uh, you know, you even your free ones like Amazon Freebie, which you don't need to pay for, uh, but you can open that app directly. It does sync with the TV app. And then, of course, like I said, if you're a Netflix subscriber, you have to use the app itself because they don't sync their data with the TV app. All right. So I want to stress that it is very, very easy right now. You know, it probably sounds a bit overwhelming the way that I'm describing it. But I think if you sit down and put this into practice, what you will find is that it is remarkably easy uh, to use these apps. 
and to use the Apple TV to find whatever you want to watch. And, you know, if if the only thing you ever want to do is to use a uh, linear live TV experience, you certainly can open your live TV app and just, you know, view the guide and, and that kind of thing like you would, you know, on any other platform. But um, to me, where this really shines is, you know, the on-demand experience, right? And being able to uh, find almost anything you want to watch at any time. Now, while we look at this, it would be useful for me to point out that there are other ways to get content that we've not even covered. So, for example, in some areas, and let me see, I do have I do have trainer Cliff, so I'm gonna unmute you, Cliff, in about two minutes here, and we'll we'll talk about infuse. But let me just say a couple other things, and then I'll unmute you. Um, there are other ways to get content that we have not even covered. For example, what if you have an over-the-air antenna? Whatever channels are available in your area, broadcast channels, can you watch those on Apple TV? And the answer is, yes, you can. Now, an over-the-air antenna could either be something that's inside your house or in some areas, if the towers are a bit further away, you have to put the antenna outside, mounted on your roof or whatever, right? I'm not going to get into that per se, but I just want to say that if you have an over-the-air antenna, there's a very good possibility it will work with your Apple TV. You have to get a special box. Um, it's called an HD home run, and they make different models of the HD home run. So uh, you'll want to check on Amazon or you know do a Google search for what's currently available because this isn't even something that I have kept track of in quite a while. Um, because I haven't needed to, uh, praise God. You know, there was a time when we first started using the Apple TV that your live local channels, your, you know, broadcasts like NBC affiliates and CBS, they were not available digitally over streaming. But now that's all changed and they are. So we don't really, you know, have need of that. But for those that do have maybe an outdoor or an indoor over the air antenna, you can get one of these HD home runs and you connect the antenna to it and then you connect the HD home run box to your internet router, gateway, you know, modem, whatever. And then all you have to do is download an app for the Apple TV called Channels. And Channels will communicate with the HD home run. And so now whatever over the air channels are available in your area, You'll be able to watch them on your Apple TV and you can pause and rewind and do all of those things as well. So it's a really powerful experience for those people who have uh, over the air antennas. Another thing that I want to talk about is content that you have in your home, such as home movies and things of that nature. Now, this is, we're not going to get into legality and condemning or condoning anything but whatever it is that you have on your home movies doesn't matter we're not even gonna you know touch that maybe it's just a you know a grandchild's um recital or something it does soccer game it doesn't matter but you have a whole bunch of home movies how can you watch them on your apple tv well there are several different ways that you can do that the first thing is you have to get them into a digital format right so if they're on dvd you're gonna have to convert them You'll need an app that's going to convert them. Like, um, uh, you know, I don't even know what we, I forget what we had. Maybe Trainer Cliff will remember when I unmute him because I haven't used it in a while. But uh, there was an app that he and I were both using that, you know, would take your DVD content and convert it into a digital file. Once it's a digital file, now the question is, how do I get that to the Apple TV? Now, if you only do this periodically, you can use what's called home sharing. There's an app on your Apple TV called Computers, and you can choose that app, and you can watch movies and TV shows through home sharing. The key thing with home sharing is you have to have your computer on. You have to use your computer or your iPhone as like a, a server, iPhone or iPad, uh, but you got to use them as like a, a, a streaming serv a server. And they must be on, and they must be on the same Wi-Fi network. 
as your Apple TV. And they must be signed into the same Apple ID. Okay. Now, most of those things are already going to be the case. They're going to use the same Apple ID, same Wi-Fi and stuff. But you may not want to have to have your iPad or iPhone nearby and up and running or your computer on all the time to do this, right? It just may not be the way you prefer to do it. And if you're going to be doing it a lot, if you have a lot of home movies, it definitely is, is not going to be the most efficient way. Maybe you have so many home movies that you want to put them on a NAS. What's a NAS? That's a network attached storage device. It's like a hard drive that connects to your internet router. So when you have this situation, there's going to be another way to do it. And I'm going to ask Trainer Cliff to come here and to tell us all about it. All right, so let's talk about Enthuse. And I think that app you were talking about, Matt, was, well, I use Mac DVD Ripper Pro, but there was another one that I can't think of right now that we shared a license for that I can't, I can't remember what that one is called either. Um, but yeah, that, that was, I can't either at this point, but. Rip It, I think it was called. That might, yeah, you know what? I think you're right. I think it was Rip It. Yep, yeah. It was called Rip It. So you can use yep. Rip It, you can use Mac DVD Ripper Pro. I don't even know if they're around because I haven't needed it in years. Um, there's also another one called, um, I can't even remember, but I paid for it, and I don't even use it anymore, Wondershare. Wondershare, net, you can go to Wondershare.net and get that. Um, and based on the legal, legality of DVD and commercial, from my understanding, and I'm not a lawyer, but this is what I've been told, as long as you're not selling it, if you own it, per se, and you're just ripping it into a digital backup format, that's fine. But it, it gets into the, the, the gray area when you're ripping 20 copies and selling them for 10 bucks out of your car trunk. That's what you're not supposed <laughs> to do. Yeah. So, But if you're putting them in your own personal collection so you can stream them on the big screen, that's fine. So let's talk about this app called Enthuse. I discovered this app probably about eight years ago now I was living in Florida at the time and I had converted all my movies that were MKV AVI into mp4s and put them in my iTunes library as Matt mentioned before there was you know home sharing and you had to have your computer on and your Apple TV connected and all this and you know it was okay but this app came out and I was mad I said I just spent a week converting all these videos to mp4 and you guys come up with an app that can stream anything oh i was hot because <laughs> i have a i have a relatively large collection back then it was probably only about you know 2500 movies and you know maybe a handful of tv shows like maybe a hundred and something now i've gotten into the habit of getting a lot of stuff in various ways and I'm up to probably about 8,000 movies, probably about 600 TV shows. And, you know, it's, it's convenient because if you have an Apple TV or an I, if you have any kind of iDevice in my house, because the Infuse app doesn't just work on the Apple TV. It works on your iPad. It works on your iPhone. It even works on your Mac. I mean, I can open up it on my Mac right now, and it'll update the library, and I can just hit play on any movie that I want, and it'll it'll play on my Mac. So, um, you you what you do is, like Matt mentioned, you have a network attached storage storage device which connects to your router or a Ethernet switch, which is basically an extension cord, for lack of a better term, for um being able to plug more things into your router so you'll plug this internet switch in that has seven or eight ports on it and you plug whatever you want into it and it'll show up on your network so i have a 55 terabyte network attached storage made by western digital they're they're the only ones that i use because they're accessible they have great prices and their customer service is top notch almost as good as apple's i mean you're under warranty something breaks they overnight you a new one you send them back the old one. I mean, it's just that simple. Just that easy. I mean, they take you through some troubleshooting stuff with, you know, did you do this? Did you do that? Did you unplug it? Is, is it spinning? Whatever. But the bottom line is they, they replace it instantly. So, <clears throat> so what I've done over the years, 
is collect TV shows and movies that are on this network to task storage. When I first started, I was using, believe it or not, Matt, a 256 gigabyte external hard drive. Then I moved up to a 500 gigabyte hard drive because my collection kept growing. And then I said, okay. And then they came out with a terabyte. And it was still a USB um, external drive. And then I figured, then I found out about servers, the, the network attached storage. So I started with the 8 terabyte one, moved up to 16, 24, 32, and now I have a 55. And no, it's not even nowhere near full. That's why I got it, so I wouldn't have to keep on replacing it. I think I have about half of that storage left to use, and I started with it about four years ago when I first bought my house in Minnesota. <clears throat> So this Infuse app is my, made by my buddies over at Firecore. You can go check them out at Firecore.com. Like I said, Infuse is available for the iPhone, iPad, Apple TV, and the Mac. And what it does is it streams anything to your big screen, any format except MP3. It's not designed for music. Get DLC for that. But Infuse will stream anything. MP4, MKV, AVI. Probably some formats I don't even know exist. <laughs> M4U, whatever. If it's a video file, Infuse will play it. It doesn't matter. You don't have to convert anything. It does it for you on the fly. Um, so you get all these movies and TV shows, personal uh, home videos, whatever, into this collection. And you download the app. It's free for the first seven days, I think. You can either pay $0.99 cent a month, which I don't. Or you can pay... Uh, ten dollars for the whole year, which I do, and I'm kind of mad because back about four years ago they had a sale for the lifetime membership for only forty five bucks, and I should have grabbed it when I saw it because now it's up to ninety four, and I just don't want to bite that bullet yet. <laughs> but I guess if you think about it, eight times eight times ten is eighty, is and I would and I basically I've already paid for a lifetime membership for over the last eight years, but you know what can you do? So you download this app. You connect it to your network, or you, you, uh, it's, it's already connected to your network because your Apple TV signed into your network. But I have a password on my network attached door because I don't trust people. So what I had to do is I had to put in my username and password of my server, and once I did that, it asked me to add favorites. And I have all my uh, media content separated. I have movies in one folder, TV shows in another folder. So I, I connected those, and what it does is it... It uses IMDB, I think, and a couple of other websites, and it downloads the metadata, or as some people call it, eye candy, for the sighted world to view the posters and the synopsis and the actors and whatever. Who's ever in the TV show or the movie, it downloads it directly to that file for you. So when you open it up, you can see who who's the actors, who the directors are, and, you know, what year it came out. It even has a feature now, Matt, where you can play a trailer before you play. If there's a trailer available, it, it plays the trailer for you now. So you can actually get a preview of the movie before you even play it. Um, it has continuous playback. So say I'm watching Matt's favorite show, The Nanny, and I'm in the kitchen and episode five is over and epi it'll automatically go to episode six and, and so on and so forth. You can turn that off if you want, but I, I find it convenient, especially when you're watching something that you like and you want it to continue to play. It has resume playback. So if I'm watching the Titanic, which is three hours, 13 minutes and 58 seconds long, don't ask me how I know that, but, and you stop it at a hour and 45 minutes and you come back to it when you push play again it's going to ask you if you want to continue where you left off or start from the beginning so again this app is probably my favorite app on the apple tv i love paramount plus because it has all my star Trek. i love peacock because it has my sunday night football and i love you know max because it has all the classics and and new stuff like you know it has a different world and um it, it used to have um Living single, but I think that's moved over to Hulu, which I also have that I got on a Black Friday deal for ninety nine cent a month, and Disney Plus for three twenty or for two ninety nine for an add on. So that was a great deal. <clears throat> and that's another thing too with these streaming services, you always want to be on the lookout. Subscribe to their newsletter, go to their website, you know, read blogs because they always got some sales going on. Matter of fact, I just got an email from Paramount Plus the other day telling me to come back. They were using an old email address, not knowing that I already have a subscription. But they sent me an email talking about come back for two ninety nine for six months, 
which is a great deal because the normal price is nine ninety nine. So you just gotta be on the lookout for some of these deals of the services that you like. Me, like Matt, I if if it's not sports, I don't watch live TV. You know, I'm not into the what is it, Matt? With that y'all got watch the 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 singing show. I forgot what it's called, but. Okay, what? yeah, I, I was uh, I was muted there, but yeah, um, American Idol. Um, yeah. Oh yeah, so or, American or, you know, Idol. There's also America's Got Talent. All those different. What about the know? Voice? Do they do live stuff too, like that for the contest? Yes, they do live stuff on the Voice too. Yeah, yeah. So those yep. those are shows that I'm not into, but you know, to each their own. But if it's not live sports, I'm not I'm I'm not watching it on live TV. I I like to stream because yeah. I don't like commercials. I've been spoiled, and now I am a '70s kid. Don't get me wrong, I had to sit through commercials during good times, what's happening, different strokes, and, and the Jeffersons, but now I don't, so I have that choice. But Infuse is the app, again, it's my favorite app on the Apple TV, besides the, besides Apple TV+, Plus, because of the, their audio description selections and the library of theirs that keeps on growing and growing and growing. It may not be all kid-friendly, but it, they, they're getting up there. Um... So I'm making sure. Oh, also in Infuse, you can create playlists. So I have a playlist called Classic 90. So instead of having to search for it, which it does does have that feature, you can search for something instead of scrolling through 7,000 movies or 452 TV shows. You can search for something and it'll pull up the results. And the dictation on it works great. You do not have you do not have to use the remote to swipe swipe back and forth to um, you know get to the letters. You can either dictate. Or you can use your iPhone, your iPhone keyboard to, um, you know, type on screen because it automatically pops up to, uh, you know, let you do that. You don't have to connect the Bluetooth keyboard to the Apple TV anymore, even though you can, but you don't have to because your iPhone automatically disconnects or not disconnects, automatically connects to it when you are, um, you know, uh, on the same Wi-Fi network and Bluetooth is turned on. So... Again, you can have playlists, you can have collections of movies and TV shows. You can, like I said, if it's a video file, Infuse will play it. I have not run into an eight and a half years that I've been using this app. I've not run into a video file that it has not been able to play. Sometimes if it's an older file or it's, you know, maybe not formatted in the right way, it'll take Infuse a little bit to process it, maybe at the most five to ten seconds. But other than that... It's the it's the it's it, it's 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 the greatest app that I use for my especially for my collections. Now there's a lot of stuff that I have in Infuse that now are on streaming services, but when I got them they didn't, so I just choose to keep them. Like all my Star Treks, I can get them on Paramount Plus, and I think they moved all the Star Trek movies Matt over to Max though. But the Infuse app is it's. It's straightforward, it's easy to use, and if you have a good, if you have a large personal collection, for me, that's the way to go. You could use DLC, but it's not as neat and clean and intuitive with voiceover as Infuse is. Like I said, you click on a file, you can click on a, you can create folders. Like my wife has interests, I have interests, so I put our stuff in different folders, so I don't have to be bothered with her stuff, she doesn't have to be bothered with mine. I mean, it plays the movie. It works with HomePods, with the ARC. I don't even know if you've talked about that yet, Matt. Have you about with the HomePods? Not even ARC? gotten into that yet. No, Not well, yet. Well, but, my uh, my yeah, fault. Jumping up. ahead, but the HomePods. No, that's all right. That's all right. <laughs> but the, but the HomePods <laughs> is is gonna beat out any soundbar you got. I guarantee you. If you have a if you have a big oh, if you have incredible. a big if you have two big HomePods put together. And stereo surround sound with ARC, there's not a sound bar out there that can touch it. And that includes Sony's no. and Bose. So <laughs> Yeah. But and, yeah. And, and it includes it includes these, you know, three or four thousand dollar home theater systems. I think the home pods sound better than those personally too. Exactly. Um but yeah, now the, one the, thing we But oh, you have any I, I was about to ask you if you had any questions on anything you think I might have missed. Um the only thing I, I, I that was excellent. You did a great job with that. The only thing I would add to that is if there are people who maybe say, well, I want to try this because I have some home movies, but I don't have a NAS yet, you know, you can attach Infuse to, uh, you can link Infuse to your, like your Google Drive or your Dropbox. Oh, yeah, I did forget about that. Your Google you Drive, your Dropbox. You have to set that up and, from the phone, right? And, you have to set right, it up from the exactly. phone. Exactly. Right you, you have to set it up from the app on the phone. But once you do, it shows up on your Apple TV. And more, more recently, um, Matt, they have included P Cloud. 
Oh, okay, okay. And and the reason that's significant, other than Google Drive, P Cloud gives you the most free storage and the ability to earn more fast. So P Cloud, that's my second favorite uh, cloud service. But they give you ten gigabytes off the top, and when you invite people, you get a gig free up to ten gigs. So you technically get twenty gigs free. So yeah, P Cloud, Dropbox, and Google Drive are the ones for sure that I know that you can link up. I don't, people have requested iCloud, you know, it's probably one of those Google Apple versus Apple uh, versus uh, the buddies over at Firecore. There's probably some infrastructure that they didn't want to do there because if they did, I mean, that would be great too, but it, it's not a deal breaker for me because I have the NAS. So, but yes, that has to be done from the phone. Once you set it up in the app on the phone, it shows up on your Apple TV. Got it, got it. Trying to think if there's anything else that I missed. Um, and oh yeah, it, it also syncs and saves your metadata across devices. So if Matt has three Apple TVs, which I think he probably has more, he you know, my like me, I have I think I have five. But if you if you sign into one, once it's set up, it shows up on all the other ones as long as it's using the same Apple ID. So it syncs with iCloud, brings down the metadata, your watch history, all that goes across oh. devices. The other thing you can do with Infuse also is one you can if you don't have a network attack storage like i talked about you can open it up you can have a usb drive connected to your mac now this app does not work for windows sorry they they it's all apple on this side but you can open it up on your mac you uh, have it plugged into your mac and have your mac open and connect to it that way so the audio description project of the american council of the blind that thinks adp.acb.org you can search and pretty much any any program that has audio description will come up if you search for it and it'll tell you where it has it so that's a good uh for folks who may not already know about it check that out is the audio description when you turn it on and off is that just for like the main setting and does that just apply to the main setting in the settings menu or is it like for like individual apps that may have to you know, may have to turn it on and off for, for those apps that makes sense that's actually an excellent question i i would assume now this is strictly hypothesizing mm -hmm. here but mm -hmm. i obviously when you do it through the playback controls that's just on the fly for that you know mm -hmm. but yeah. when you i would assume when you use the accessibility shortcut that's probably changing the setting you mean what do you mean are you talking about you're saying that's changing the the setting for the, like if you go under settings go under access right it's actually audio. changing that i would one. assume it's changing okay. the overall setting i read something the other day and i thought really because i thought if like a movie or a show had audio description that it was the same across the board wherever you were getting that audio description because it's it, isn't it built in when it's produced? Um, but I read that you know it can be the same, the no, same show, on the service. but a different level. Yep. Okay, it, it, it depends it, on the service. Yep, yep. yep. Because oh, I can get a show okay. that's audio described on Netflix, but that doesn't mean Hulu's going to have it net audio described. But but say two different places have it audio described. One can be higher quality than the other. That answer, I, I don't know the answer to that. That okay. would just depend on who they use for their audio description because each company uses who they want. When I first uh, boot up my Apple TV or whatever you call it, <laughs> do I, what button do I press to wake it up? Because I'm always confused about that. What, what do I well, press? there's a couple of different buttons you can press to wake it up. If your television is fairly new, you can just use the power button on the Apple remote, which is that top right corner. Oh, I know. I never turn that off. Yeah, you can just press and hold that for about a second, and it'll turn the TV on, and it'll wake up the Apple TV, and it'll do everything for you. Um, oh. The other button you can use is the back button on the left. Okay. Um, okay, that's one right. Of those will do it. Yep. And God bless you, everybody. Thanks to Cliff and Sarah for all your help and a great presentation, and we will uh, see you guys tomorrow. Take care. like to thank you again for joining didn't get your question answered need additional training send us an email at support at ttjtech.biz or support at stirritup.com and remember stir is spelled with a u that's s-t-u-r-i-t-u-p dot com i'm trainer cliff 
Thanks for joining us, and see you next time. God bless.